Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Edgeworth channel. So today we will be discussing about mega esophagus in dogs. If you haven't subscribed this channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. So esophagus. So esophagus is the hollow muscular tube that connects oral cavity to your stomach. So it acts as the carrier of the food and liquid from the throat to the stomach. So it functions as a part of the digestive system. So we have got two esophageal sphincters that is upper esophageal sphincter and lower esophageal sphincter. So in case of canine mostly that is 90 percentage of the esophagus is composed of striated muscles whereas a very less that is mainly the lower esophageal sphincter is composed of smooth muscle tissue. So the body has both uh, striated and smooth muscle but mostly it is having striated. So lower esophageal sphincter that is also called as LES has smooth muscles. So you can focus on this point that is entire canine esophagus is striated. Lower one third of pharyngeal is also having smooth. Mainly innervated by glossopharyngeal, pharyngeal, recurrent laryngeal nerves and esophageal artery that is the branch of thoracic iota will be supplying blood to the esophagus. So you can see in this diagram, you can very well appreciate from the oral cavity, it takes the food and liquid to the stomach. So this is the histological cut section of the esophagus and you can see in case of horse, there is very well explained tunica adventitia. That is the most outermost cover and you can also see there are lymph follicles in case of submucosa in case of pig and also in case of dog so this is actually the neural control of the esophagus you can very well appreciate that is the cranial sphincter this is the esophageal body this is the caudal sphincter and this is the starting of stomach that is the cardia part and mainly the cranial sphincter will be controlled by cervical ganglion Esophageal body will be controlled by thoracic ganglion and caudal sphincter will be controlled by celiac ganglion. So the respiratory center, the saline center, the vomiting center all has got sensory inputs which will connect all the three sphincters and the body. So whenever there is any problem with the swallowing center, it can affect the esophagus. Whenever there is any problem with the stomach or the caudal sphincter, it can lead to the information to the swallowing center and this can lead to anorexia. So I guess you got, you got what about the brainstem affections and the neural control of esophagus. So moving to the mega esophagus, the term mega esophagus describes a syndrome of segmental or diffuse esophageal dilatation. That is either it can be complete esophageal dilatation or it can be segmental that is topical. That is some place that is it is disorder characterized by diffuse esophageal dilatation and a peristalsis. There will be loss of peristalsis. So that food will not be moving from the cranial part to the caudal part. So it is mainly classified into congenital form that is from the birth itself. Next is acquired form that is idiopathic that is the cause we don't know and secondary that is secondary to some of the diseases. So there are some diseases which will affect the animal that can lead to acquired form of mega esophagus. So moving to the etiology that is congenital mega esophagus that is the animal is born with the condition. So when we will get to know is actually when the animal goes to the weaning age and the puppies and kittens begin eating solid food they start to regurgitate. So next is the acquired mega esophagus which is much common and occurs in the later life that is in adult or in case of middle-aged animals. When esophageal mortality is decreased or it, if it is absent, the food and liquid get accumulated in the esophagus and have difficulty getting into the stomach, that is a peristalsis. So it can be by two, that is damage between the nerves and the muscles of the esophagus, that is the myasthenia gravis, degeneration or traumatic injury of the brain or spinal cord, the blockage of the esophagus by a foreign body, a tumor or a scar tissue. Severe inflammation of esophagitis that is uh, GERD conditions. And it can also be leading to the hormonal diseases that is due to hypothyroidism. 
and also due to hypoadrenocorticism that is Addison's disease. It can also be due to toxins that is lead, thallium and snake envenomation because in case of neurotoxic snakes they completely affect the neural system and that can lead to aperistalsis, the control of the thoracic ganglia and celiac ganglia will be lost and that can lead to lesser peristaltic activity of the esophageal body as well as the lower esophageal sphincter. So you can see whenever there is any dilatation in case of esophagus or in case of any abnormal motility where there is decreased motility, the food or the liquid get accumulated in the esophageal dilated segments and then may have difficulty to get into the stomach. So clinical signs mainly it will be regurgitation, halitosis that is very bad smell, bad smell and calcium that is excess salivation. So you can see uh, whenever the pup they will go to the weaning age they will be starting feeding what solid food. Whenever they are having solid food they start to regurgitate. This is a classical clinical sign for megaesophagus that is congenital megaesophagus. So diagnosis, history and clinical signs and also from breed history that is parental hood, blood test, radiography and endoscopy. So actually there is no standard blood test specifically for the diagnosis of megaesophagus but blood test for myasthenia gravis can be done that is a failure of nerves and muscle to communicate. So if at all an animal is myasthenia gravis it can have megaesophagus. So, a complete blood count, serum biochemistry panel that includes creatinine kinase activity and urine analysis should be performed in all regurgitating patients, especially in cases where mega esophagus is suspected. So, we can also go for acetylcholine receptor antibody test in case of acquired hemobitis, which is most commonly identified underlying disease. A baseline cortisol concentration test and T4 concentration test can also be performed. So moving to the important diagnostic technology that is the radiography. So you can see, you can very well appreciate here to see. This is the esophagus and this is the dilatation of the esophagus. That is prior to the diaphragm you can see segmental dilatation. That is segmental dilatation can be easily visible. So next is the segmental dilatation. You can see this much dilatated. So this is actually the contrast radiography. So you can very well appreciate the contrast station that is basic perfect. So you can see mega esophagus full of retained kibble and ingester. This is the trachea. Trachea has been pushed. And even the heart get pushed. This can lead to heart burning, esophagitis, etc. So you can see the contrast radiography that is barium sulfate. There are barium sulfate balls in the stomach. Also with the food. So the complications is whenever the animal is regurgitating, there is chance for aspiration pneumonia and esophagitis. And you should also go for a broad spectrum antibodies for aspiration pneumonia. So that's why whenever an animal is coming with respiratory distress also with regurgitation, you can also focus that is due to aspiration pneumonia by regurgitation. So pro-motility drugs like metoclopramide and cisapride has no action on canine megaesophagus. They act only on smooth muscles. Why? Because canine esophagus is mainly composed of striated muscles. Metoclopramide and cisapride will mainly act on smooth muscles. So giving metoclopramide and cisapride is not actually for a real use. So you can go for bethanicol, that is parasympathomimetics. So management, this is the best management that we can ever use, that is the Bailey's chair. So once the animal get familiarized with the Bailey's chair, it will be very happy to get into the Bailey's chair and start to eat. So you can get the Bailey's chair according to your animal's size, body weight and counter. So you can see they will have an elevated feeding level and also a Bailey's chair. Please avoid this type of feeding. Thank you.